Hello there, Homeschool Nolan here, here to help you navigate learning in the digital age. February is Black History Month, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of the most important Americans in the 19th century, who is often regarded as the father of the Civil Rights Movement, and that is Frederick Douglass, and what he can teach us about both slavery and freedom. Slavery, unfortunately, still exists in the world today just under different forms. And there's much we can learn from Frederick Douglass in his first autobiography, The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. In this book, Douglass talks about his early life as a slave, and then about his life afterwards as a freedman, dedicating his life to abolishing slavery and bringing freedom to all. In doing so, Douglas reveals some important insights on both slavery and freedom that most people may not be aware of and that are still valuable today. One of the first things Frederick Douglass teaches us is that slavery dehumanizes both the slave and the slave owner alike. There's probably nothing more dehumanizing than to be a slave. But what may not be as obvious is that slavery also dehumanizes and strips away the humanity of the slave owner as well. Dulles describes this phenomenon when he talks about the time as a young boy when he was sent to a new master in Baltimore named Hugh Ald. Hugh Ald's wife had never owned a slave before and to Frederick's surprise she treated him well almost like her own son. He described her as quote a woman of the kindest heart and finest feelings. Because of her, for the first time in his life, Frederick began sleeping in comfortable beds, eating good food, and wearing clean clothes. But the best thing Mrs. Ald probably did for him was she started teaching Frederick Douglass how to read, which is something no slave owner ever did. But when her husband, Mr. Ald, found out about this, he told her to immediately stop teaching him how to read. He reminded her that he was a slave and that she was his master. It was then that Douglas noticed a sharp change in her. He wrote, that cheerful eye under the influence of slavery soon became red with rage. That voice made all of sweet accord change to one of harsh and horrid discord. And that angelic face gave place to that of a demon. He also observed that slavery proved as injurious to her as it did to me. But out of that painful experience came an important revelation, and that is knowledge is the pathway to freedom. Slave owners didn't want their slaves learning to read because with knowledge, the slaves would be much harder to control. All slave masters want their slaves to remain ignorant and not know any better. This is what Frederick Douglass discovered when his master forbade him to learn how to read. He wrote, I now understood what had been to me a most perplexing difficulty, to wit, the white man's power to enslave the black man. It was a grand achievement, and I prized it highly. From that moment, I understood the pathway from slavery to freedom. From that moment on, Frederick Douglass would do everything he could to learn how to read, including making friends with white boys and exchanging his bread for a few lessons. Eventually, he would also learn a new important word, abolition, and dedicate his life to the cause of abolishing slavery. Slavery is more than just owning another person. It's also owning everything they create and produce. When Frederick Douglass grew up into a tall, strong young man, his master hired him out to work at a shipyard in Baltimore alongside other free white workers. But well, unlike the other white workers, Frederick, because he was a slave, had to give up all his wages to his master. As he put it, <clears throat> I was now getting, as I have said, $1.50 per day. I contracted for it. I earned it. It was paid to me. It was rightfully my own. Yet, upon each returning Saturday night, 
I was compelled to deliver every cent of that money to Master Hugh. And why? Not because he earned it, not because he had any hand in earning it, not because I owed it to him, nor because he possessed the slightest shadow of a right to it, but solely because he had the power to compel me to give it up. The right of the grim-visaged pirate upon the high seas is exactly the same. In other words, slavery isn't just about owning another person. It's also about owning everything that person produces and creates. In that sense, the slave owner is no different from a pirate on the high seas who steals from others. Now it's easy to conclude that slavery is evil. What is not as easy is for a slave to try to escape to freedom. Unlike Frederick Douglass, most slaves did not try to escape because they knew there would be severe punishment and consequences if they were caught. In order to escape the bonds of slavery, a slave must love freedom more than they fear death. This is what Douglas wrote about during the time he led a group of slaves to escape. He wrote, In coming to a fixed determination to run away, we did more than Patrick Henry when he resolved upon liberty or death. With us, it was doubtful liberty at most, and almost certain death if we failed. For my part, I should prefer death to hopeless bondage. Douglas demonstrated this love of freedom over death one day when he fought back against a brutal slave breaker named Ed Covey. Ed Covey was a slave breaker hired to drive Frederick and the other slaves hard. He would frequently kick Frederick when he collapsed due to exhaustion. But one day, Frederick Douglass just snapped and grabbed Ed Covey by the throat. After that incident, Ed Covey was too embarrassed to report that he had been physically overpowered by a slave, and he never laid a hand on Frederick again. This was a turning point in Frederick's life. As he described it, My long crushed spirit rose, cowardice departed, Bold defiance took its place, and now I resolved that, however long I might remain a slave in form, the day had passed forever when I would be a slave in fact. So there you have it. Important insights on both slavery and freedom from the father of the civil rights movement, Frederick Douglass. His words are still relevant today because sadly, slavery still exists today just in different forms. Instead of a plantation owner, today's slave master might be a human trafficker or even a government that runs a labor camp. That's why we can still draw upon both the words and the wisdom of Frederick Douglass as we confront the evils of today. If you're looking for a good book for kids, I recommend Who Was Frederick Douglass from the Who HQ series. The life of and work of Frederick Douglass, I believe, should be included as part of every homeschooling curriculum today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to click subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.